Okay, let me just make sure that I'm recording here, and I am. I just want to make sure that I'm recording. This is Angelo Quinones, and you reach I Am Ministries. I Am Ministries is designed to give you dependable and accurate answers that come straight from God's holiness for what the Bible, and let me add, from the original original languages of the Bible. Okay, so we're going to tackle a tough one today. And so that's just the deal. Now I want you to keep in mind, okay? I want to keep in. I want to. I want to remember this, and I want for you to remember this throughout the study before we get to it. Hupa degma. That's the key to the study. Okay. Before we find out what something is, we have to find out what something is not. Okay. That's the royal method of Bible study. Okay, what something isn't before we check it out and see what it is. Okay, but hupadegma is not here. I'm not going to tell you what it is, but hupadegma, that Greek what, found six times in the Greek New Testament. It's not recorded. Okay, here in verse 3 of Hebrews. Okay. Now, um, let's pray before the study. This is going to be a study on Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3, because the witnesses say that Jesus is a copy. Okay. He's not a copy, and we're going to see that. All right. Holy and merciful and gracious God, we come to you through the new and living way, through uh, the veil, that is to say, through Christ's flesh. And um, we just come uh, to you, praising you for you are great, your name is great, and you are holy and merciful and gracious, and and um but we'll judge the adversary. So we just come to you with humble hearts that you judge our sins in, you know, on your son or in your son. And, um, and by his stripes, we are healed. So we just praise you and thank you for this, Lord. Please forgive us of our sins. Please receive our thanksgiving for everything spiritual and physical today. And please help us in, in this study um, and uh, help us to be accurate. Help us to, to accept what's here Help us to get out of any movement that's not uh, God-glorifying. And uh, let us think of others and not only ourselves, uh, because we could shape or break uh, the futures of many. So with this, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, guys, this is the Kuda Gran. This is the key. Let me just start off by saying I have a very bad cold. Okay, so if you hear me sniffling and 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 about to sneeze and all this other stuff, I mean, I don't know what kind of Greek word that would be about to sneeze, but anyway, um, just forgive me for that. Okay. Also, I am legally blind, so I cannot read the Greek like I recite it. You know, like John one one and no locos que logos sin on que no locos. You know, I cannot do that because I'm legally blind. So I'm using a magnifying glass, okay? You hear it right here. There are three lenses put together by a thread through the slots because I no longer have the, the outer case. So, I mean, that's hard enough as it is. And so I am legally blind. I did come from the United States of America, and I did relocate to the Philippines, and I do not have my, my reading equipment. I do not have my visual tech, which was a television screen which had a tray, and then you put, you know, whatever you want to read on the tray, and the camera enlarges it on the screen. I do not have that. I, I, just, I couldn't, you know, bring that, obviously, on the plane, okay? Just much too heavy. So um, just please forgive me for a reading slow or something like that or whatever the case may be. I do edit these, um, and I try to keep them as, uh, as accurate as possible. All right. Now let's read verse 3 from Hebrews uh, chapter 1. It says something like this. An NET, a very respected English Bible, and the name of it is the New uh, English Translation, uh, is very respected by, by Greek scholars. Okay, now let's go. It says over here, quote, The Son, not Logos or Lagos or, or the what, but the Son, that's key also, the Son is the radiance of his, meaning God the Father, of his glory, and the representation of his hupatasso, of his essence, okay? And hupatasso is a lexical form. We're going to look at the other form in the text, of his essence, okay? And he, uh, it says over here, and he sustains all things, okay, by his power, by his powerful word, it says over here, and so... 
when he uh, had accomplished um, cleansing for sins, meaning our sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Okay? All right, so that's good. Now, um, <clears throat> let's check out another translation before we get into the Greek, okay? Let's, let's look at two kissing cousins of themselves, the King James and NIV. I say that tongue-in-cheek because, you know, there's a King James-only cult that wants you to believe that you can't read anything else but the King James. So, like, the King James is some sort of standard. It's not the standard, okay? There are other good uh, English translations. I just read one. Equal or surpassing. Okay, the King James in in accuracy. Okay, but it's very is a very elegant and a and a very accurate translation. Uh, um, you know, for the most part, it's a very good translation of King James. I love the King James, but his idea that you can only use the King James is just a work of the devil. Well, let's just read the King James and the NIV. Who being and that's own there. We're gonna see why it became own that Amy was there participle actually. Present, um, present participle, active. Okay, who being the b brightness of his glory and the express image of his person. That's a wrong translation. It's not person. Of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power. And we ran out of room. Okay, now verse 3. Of the NIV says something like this because we're just concentrating on the first basic, you know, the, the clause, first clause anyway. The sun, S O N, the sun is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation, okay, of his being. That's very uh, being, okay, uh, says over here, uh, sustaining all things, ellipsis, okay but of his being that's more accurate than person it's not person there okay we could do a part two of this and, and see why it's not person but the ac but the accuracy of the king change is not good here okay it's not person it's substance it's hupatasso hupatasso is the greek word and we're going to see the lexical form all right so we come to the nasb translation of hebrew chapter 1 verse 3 and it says something like that and he is the radiance of his glory and the exact and the exact representation of his nature it says over here okay of his nature so the nasb says nature uh the niv says i believe being and uh and substance is really behind the word so there's a there's a large semantic range there's a large semantic pool and we're going to look at it uh, but let's look at the Greek uh, now. So let's go back to, let's go back to it. All right. Now, let's check this out. Now uh, this is the Greek here. Praise God, He gets the glory. Okay, Hebrews chapter one verse three says something like this: "Has on and on is a participle. It means being. It's from Amy, by the way. About Gasma, about gasma taste daxes, kai charetter taste hupa staseos, hupa staseos auto. And I'm not going to read the rest of the rest of the verse because we're not really concentrating on the other half of this verse. We're just concentrating on Jesus either being okay, a copy like the JL, JWs teach, or he being okay, the expressed. Um, uh, nature, a representation. Okay, representation. All right, so. On a glass table? Mm. Okay, okay, thanks, son. Okay, so. Um, thanks, son. So it says over here in uh, uh, verse 3, uh, chapter 1, uh, in Byzantine text form. Okay, Hans on, so that's the same. Apau. Gas. Uh, let me see where it says over here. Apau uh, gasma. Apau gasma teis daxes kai charater teis hupa staseos autu. 
okay now we're gonna look at the we're gonna look at everything okay so that's just the deal all right now um so i gave you the greek from uh the most you know um based on the most ancient authorities and i gave you the greek based on the byzantine text form the largest of the family of uh, families of manuscripts but not the most accurate though um so basically let me comment upon what you know why we need such a teaching and behind the back you know, in the background you're going to see the net okay <clears throat> the reason why we have to study this uh text is because you know jehovah's witnesses like to say and we saw this in the Greg Stafford James White debate that I uploaded uh, for the first time on YouTube. I'm the one who uploaded. I'm the original. I'm the originator of the of the of the uploading of the video. And uh, basically, I think it has over 800,000 views. And when I got it up there for the first time, I never knew that it was going to really do so well. Uh, anything in uh, you know in that you know of uh, any of that number is pretty good for Christianity okay so that's just that's a pretty good um, you know and, and it helped a lot of people and it actually uh, forced me okay to to make a ministry of my own called I am ministries because of the inaccuracies of that debate and because um, and because of the debates that sprung from it by people calling me up in my ministry after watching the video you understand what I'm saying now, um, the reason why we need to study it is because they say that Jesus is a copy. Now, first of all, the Greek word hupadegma does not appear in this text. Okay, that means copy. If God wanted to say that Jesus was a copy, he would have used the Greek word hupadegma. That's found and recorded in uh, 2 Peter chapter 2, uh, John chapter 13, three times in this book, I believe in chapter 4, 8, and 9. And not to mention Skia, he's, you know, Shadow. He could have used that one, but he didn't. And also, um, the other one, the other sighting of Huba Degma in the Greek New Testament, which is, you know, like, all, like I said before, there are only six sightings, okay? None teach that Jesus is a copy, okay? And only one actually um, was used when Jesus was uh, yet upon earth, and uh, he washed the feet of the disciples, giving an example. That's the, that's the Greek word, you know, hupa, hupa dekma, copy. He gave an example of how we should do things. You understand what I'm saying? Now, um, it appears also in James chapter 5, maybe around verse 10. Okay, hupa dekma. Okay, hupa dekma. Now, but hupa dekma is not here. That's the most important thing. We have to get rid of the notion that he's a copy right off the bat. He's not a copy. Okay, he's a real McCoy. You understand what I'm saying? A copy is a copy. Okay. As a matter of fact, okay, another uh, meaning in the semantic in the semantic pool, I like to call a semantic pool. Okay, the semantic domain, if you will, is uh, an, an engraver, a tool. Okay, so I mean, um, so I mean, there's, uh, there's, there's, there's not only one meaning, okay, um, behind the Greek word, you know, charakter. It's not charakter, it's charakter. It's a ch, is a guttural. It looks like an x, x, but it's not an x. It's a ch, uh, found and recorded, and actually, arche, uh, in the word arche, found fifty-five times in the Greek New Testament. That word arche, in uh, John one one. All right, so he's not a copy. We have to get rid of that. Listen, Jehovah's Witnesses, so-called, because they're not witnessing for Jehovah, can't get away with using the word copy just because Greg Stafford used the word copy, you know? You know what I'm saying? I mean, James White got punched in the nose by Greg Stafford in the, in, during the interrogation okay, of the question on John chapter 17, and now, you know, JWs are puffed up thinking they could do the same thing to us. Well, I created a ministry, so that won't happen to you. And that won't happen to me. <clears throat> okay? So that's just it. So that's what the ministry is all about. To give accurate and dependable answers. Okay? You know, um, that, come from, that come from the original language of the Bible. Okay? If we do that, we're fine. All right. Now, um, so it doesn't mean copy, but what does it mean? If it doesn't mean copy, right? If the Jehovah's Witnesses are wrong by strictly saying copy. Okay? 
Uh, Mark from Missouri at JW, who did over 100 debates, probably. I didn't count them all, so I'm just going to say 100 debates. I mean, you know, thou literally thousands of voice texts we shared, um, you know, um, back and forth together. So literally thousands of messages uh, on audio. Okay, because I don't like to send, you know, print uh, uh, stuff uh, to people. I just don't, you know, because of my vision, you know. So I just record stuff, and then I get stuff, and I put that stuff, okay, as part of a, a debate and campaign. And I have actual debates with Mark from Missouri. He said that he is the reflection. It's just a reflection. He's a mirror, in other words, okay? Before we get into the Greek, this is the full Greek construction of Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3, okay? Now, um... He's not a reflection. Is in other words, he's like a mirror. He's not the he's not the real McCoy. He's not he's not God. That's what they say, or that's what Mark says. Also, he's not caught. He's just a reflection of God. And then Mark gives this example. You understand of um, him standing near a mirror, and you can see, you don't see Mark, but you see the 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 mirror. And yet the mirror can't speak, can't do anything, but. You can't ask it questions. You can't ask this and that or whatever. It's just giving a reflection of Mark. First of all, it's very inaccurate of Jesus because you can ask him questions on number one, number two. He was doing things, and he's not a mirror. He's not a reflection. He's not a <clears throat> cappy. He's not a hoopadegma of God. He is God. Now, God says so, okay, in this chapter two times that uh, Jesus, his son, is through deity, Okay, he says it in verse 8, he says it in a verse 10 of this chapter. He calls him Hatheas with special definiteness because nothing else could be used. So the article was used, and the nominative form of the article, you understand? So the nominative form of, of, of Thea has to be used. Okay, Theas, second declension, what? Uh, uh, masculine, uh, singular, and, and nominative, you know, that has to be used, right? In and of itself, theta means divine, by the way. Nowadays it's called feta, the first letter in, in the Greek uh, word, uh, theos. You understand what I'm saying? And so um, so that had to be used. So he used special definiteness. He used special force like old Timothy, like Paul used in uh, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 20. No, he didn't use special force, okay? He used special definiteness, okay? You understand? Special definite. Not only definiteness or, or definite, that, that something is definite, but special Definite. It's according to Julius R. Manti, according to the to the book that he uh, co-authored with uh, Professor Dana, way back in the 1950s. I, be, I believe that was the first time it came out, uh, published in the 1950s, and you know that's one of the great first great, um, you know, not one of the first, but you know one of the great uh, Greek uh, manuals of the of the New Testament. You understand what I'm saying? Manuals of the Greek New Testament. Great Greek scholar. And we have great Greek scholars uh, uh, today. We have Mounts, we have uh, Dan Wallace, etc. You understand? Right, so um, it doesn't mean copy. He's not a reflection. He is the real McCoy. He's the real deal. He is true deity. Now, like I just mentioned, you know, God used special definiteness to describe his son, Jesus. Call him God directly. Okay, uh, Tan Huyan is the object of address there is an accusative the case construction. The accusative case is the case of limitation as to extent. So he is addressing him only. Okay, that's the extent of the address. And um, in verse 10, okay, all right, he quotes the father. He's still talking to Jesus, you know. And so he's still addressing him, and then he calls him Jehovah. Now we see Lord in the, in the, in the, you know, you know, big deal, Lord, ah, you know. But behind that word, okay, in Psalm 102, Yahweh, okay, is found and recorded nine times, okay, in in the text of uh, Psalm 102. Now, I can't remember where all the, all the verses, I think, uh, like in Hebrew, you know, twice in verse 1, uh, one time in verse 12, another uh, uh, one time in verse 15 and 16, I believe, and uh, 18 and 19, and... Uh, I believe 21 and 22, I, I believe. And I think maybe verse 23 has uh, El, the shortcut uh, linguistically for, for God. You know, El. Um, that's singular. Uh, Elohim is a plural. The Mem or the M in Hebrew is making that word plural, like Cherubim, Seraphim, you know, uh, Panim and uh, Susim and all that stuff. You know what I'm saying? Even Echadim, okay, is, uh, uh, is plural. It means few. Found and recorded in chapter 27, verse 44 of Genesis. But, okay, but. 
If it doesn't mean a K reflection, if it doesn't mean copy, purely copy. If it doesn't, if, if the, uh, the Greek, listen, if the Greek word hupadegma is not in this text, well, then, then what is? Well, we have to hasten because, you know, um, time and other things on this phone is my, are my mortal enemies. You understand what I'm saying? So let's go to the Greek. So we went to the English. It's not the standard, but, you know, everybody speaks English, so we went there first, you know? So that's just this. So let's see here. Okay, that's another study that I want to do. So let's check it out. It says over here, okay, um, charetere. Okay, now first let's look at the Greek. Has, and that's a relative pronoun, the same recorded in uh, 1 Timothy uh, 3 16. Okay, and and, and that's the, and um, there was the antecedent of has in, that, in, in those texts. Okay. And so that's a relative pronoun from from the Haas paradigm, obviously. Okay, uh, Haas, uh, Haas, Ho, uh, no, Haas, Hu, Ho, Han. And that's the, that's the masculine side of the paradigm, you know what I'm saying? All right, so um, those are relative pronouns, and that's just the deal. Okay, he. Now, um, own is a participle, and this is this is this is what's left over of the construction of the participle and connecting, and you know connecting uh, vowels and stuff like that. Omega and nu is one of the participial morphemes, but um, the, and the participial morphemes go something like this, you know, uh, nu tau, uh, I believe, uh, omicron tau. Okay, and then that's another morphine. And then you have um, uh, mena with an omicron, right? And then you have, um, and then you have, um, let me see. Then you have uh, usa, huia, and mene with an eta this time. Okay, those are participial morphines. You understand what I'm saying? A participle in English is an ing word, uh, and you have participles in, in Greek. And being is the meaning of this Greek word on here. It's the same thing found and recorded in the Greek Septuagint, where it's found twice in chapter 14, uh, where God where God was speaking to Moses. And uh, then it says, um, you know, Kai, Apen, uh, Hate, As, uh, <clears throat> you know, uh, to Moses, Pras, uh, Mousein, um and he was telling him uh, what to say to the children of Israel, to the to the to the uh, to the children to Huiois, to the children of of Israel. You tell him that I am has sent has sent you, and uh, so uh, Haon, uh, ego Amy Haon is found twice over there. Okay, and so On is a participle. It's a present participle in the active voice. Okay, now the the. There was an Omicron, it was lengthened or changed to an Omega, and then the new tau participial morphine, what makes the participle, you know, what makes it what makes it what it is, is the N and the T. That's how you know this is a participle. So you may tell me, well, where's the T? Well, it was dropped off. So you have part of the, part of the participial morphine right here recorded. And then the K, and the thing with participles is not only a verb, there's a case ending. There's a noun case ending at the end of the participle, okay? And that's the thing about participles that's kind of tough, that you have two systems colliding to, you know, with one another, making up a what? You have a verb and a noun coming together. And so the Omicron and Sigma, and Omicron is just a, a pronunciation sort of a thing. The Sigma is the case ending in the nominative, and, and that was dropped off. So basically... You know, it was supposed to be really like, uh, not supposed to be, but it was really originally like uh, Antas. And then, you know, changes took place and things were shaved off. And so you were left only with the residue. You only left uh, only with a uh, with a, a vowel that lengthened and a part of the participial morphine. Okay, so on, being. It comes from Amy, by the way. Omega, no. Um, now where's my place over here? I'm using the magnifying glass, like I said before. Has on, uh, and then it says, um, "Al baug, al baug, al baug, uh, gasma, uh, taste dark says." Okay, we're gonna look at this. Okay, kai charakter, uh, taste 
uh, Hupa from Hupa Tasso, Hupa Stasios, Hupa Stasios, Altu, Altu is from the Altas paradigm, you know, Altas, Altu, Alto, Altan, you understand what I'm saying? But we're looking, we're looking at the Greek word character, but we're going to look at the other Greek words as well. Now let's look at the, now this is based on the most ancient authorities, okay? All right, now we go to the Byzantine text, um, and it's basically, it's basically the same thing. So let's look at it, all right? Uh, see. It says Haas over there, like it said in the other text. Haas and Hon. Haas Hon. Haas Hon Apau. Apau. Gasma. So that's the same. Taste, Doc says. That's the same. Okay, that's a genitive. Okay, glory. Of the glory. And Greek word Kai. Kareter. So that's the same. Uh, taste. Hupa Staseos, and that's the same. Okay, out too. So that's the same. Now, I'm not saying that the whole verse is the same, but basically, we saw this in Matthew chapter 25 and Matthew chapter 24 that the Byzantine text form, though inferior to the most uh, to the most ancient authorities of text forms, okay, is true in some situations, in some places, like John 1 1. It's true. Okay, stuff are made up. I understand that revelation, right? Last uh, chapter, but there are verses where um, they're similar to each other. So I'm just I'm using this. <clears throat> now we saw the translation, so let's just look at the at the essence. No part, no pun intended of the Greek. Okay, all right. So let's look at it now. Um, the Greek word apau. Apau gasma, okay, is is the word uh, radiance, okay. He is the radiance of his glory, and of his glory is actually, and his is not there. It's actually taste, which is a a genitive singular uh, feminine article, and doxase, which is a which is the same, okay, of his glory. His is provided there because we're talking about God the Father. You know, or the Texas. You understand what I'm saying? Originally, you understand. So that's just as it. So, oh, that's one word that we have to uh, know. Apaug, It says over here, apaug, apaugasma. Okay, so that's one word. And then the other word that we have to know, we're gonna see the definitions of these is exact, expressed, exact expression. Now, behind this word in English, we have in Greek, okay. <laughs> Okay, character. Okay, character. Okay, character. Okay, very hard to say. If you're true to the way the, the Greeks want to for you to to say this. Okay, you know what I'm saying? He alpha rho alpha kappa tau. Now they's called tough eta. Now they's called eta rho. Okay, character. All right, so uh, that's the the word there that we have to know. Now, let me take the highlights off, and let's go to the other Greek word, okay, that we have to find out about, okay, substance. Now, substance is the Greek word, okay, in the lexicon, hupataso, okay, but in the text is hupasta, hupastaseos, okay, hupastaseos. You understand what I'm saying? It's genitive and feminine and singular. Hupastaso is a noun. Okay, hupastaso, and that means substance. Okay, of the substance. He's a exact representation of the substance. Okay, not of his person. That's another Greek word for person. Okay, you understand what I'm saying? So it's not person. It's substance. Okay, or nature. Says another translation. Probably the NIV says something like that. We just looked at it. We can go back to it <coughs> now. Let's look at some of these Greek words in uh, in the lexicon. It's flimsy. Some of these uh, definitions in this app are flimsy. I mean, even though it's strong, but I mean, you know. So you could check out your Kittles, uh, Church Rack of Berries, kind of flimsy, and uh, uh, United Bible Society's uh, Pocket Lexicon. That's kind of flimsy, but they're 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 okay. But but they're small these Pocket Lexicons. But if you want to get to the big ones, the, the Kittles uh, Lexicon, Thayer's. 
uh, uh, the, what is it? Uh, um, uh, Mouse's complete expository dictionary of all the New Testament words and vines by the same sort of title. Um, you know, you can you can check out a little bit more. They'll write more about it. You understand what I'm saying? Just like when they write about uh, the Greek word uh, esos or esos about equal. I mean, it's just <clears throat> it's impeccable. And when Mouse writes about uh, Yahweh, is really nice. It's just a long, you know, sort of essay on these things. You understand what I'm saying? You're not going to get that in this app, okay? All right, so let's check out the number, okay, 541. And 541, under the umbrella of 541, the Strong's number is Apa, Apao, uh, Gasma. Apao Gasma. Now, what does Apa Gasma mean? Definition. Okay, a light flashing. Okay, forth, a light flashing forth. Okay, um, and it says from radiation and stuff like that, gleam. So it's kind of flimsy there, So, but uh, that's basically what it means, okay? Now, um, let's look at the word that's behind uh, the Strong's number of 5481. This is the one in question, okay? Now, the Greek word is charater, okay, uh, spelled out chi, alpha, rho, alpha, kappa, tau, eta, rho. And the definition of this Greek word, okay, is an impression, okay, a representation, exact, okay, uh, reproduction, a, or copy, or probably another uh Lexicon will use. Okay, a uh, graving tool. Now, you have to pick one of these. You can't pick all of them. And in the context, it doesn't mean all. You have to You have to see. It's just like the Greek word uh, uh, exegesata, right? You have to pick one. You, you either, um, you know, uh, you have to pick um, or horao. Uh, you have to pick um, like horao. You have to see, is it really seen? Or is it perception? Right? You can't say, per, you know, seen perception. Of, of some, I mean, I mean, you know, you have to pick one. You understand what I'm saying? If it's a context. I think it's uh, uh, perception there in uh, verse 18 of chapter 1 um, that no one has perceived God at any time. Because obviously, you know, men and angels uh, saw God. Now, did they see the full glory, meaning men? No. But they saw something of God. Even if it's the back parts, you saw something of the glory of God. You saw something of God. You understand what I'm saying? So uh, I think that that means because, you know, tw you know, I mean, 74 people saw God at the same time. Not his essence, but they saw something of him. That's why I'm going to record it in Exodus chapter 24, verse uh, 9 and 10. See that. You know, so people did see God. They just didn't see the totality of God, right? But they did see him. All right? You understand what I'm saying? So if you see someone, okay, in a football game, and you're not really recognizing him, but you're seeing his back parts, okay? You're seeing, you know, the quarterback and his, and his back parts or halfback and his back parts or the fullback and his back parts, you know, whatever the case may be. You understand what I'm saying? So, I mean, shotgun formation or split uh, formation or whatever the case may be, eye formation, whatever. I mean, you're going to, I mean, you're going to, you're going to see something. Of, you saw something on him. You understand? Well, you, you need to see his face, his panim in Hebrew. You understand what I'm saying? Prussel pan in Greek. You understand? But you saw something of him. And I tell him, so Mark from, <laughs> from Missouri, my, my wife uh, used to say Mark from Misery. And uh, <laughs> and then Mark says, well, that's an old joke, though. That's an old joke. Oh, yeah, but it's, it's, it stands. You know what I'm saying? And then I said, well, if your son was playing football and he, you could only see his back parts, so would you recognize us, your son? He said, no. I mean, come on, man. You know, the, 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 the rear end, the, the number, the name on the back. I mean... You can't recognize your 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 son's rear end. I'm, come on, man. Change his diapers and stuff like that. You know, you you gonna tell me you ain't gonna recognize your shin? Come on, get lost, man. See these JWs, these runny JWs. You understand what I'm saying? Trying to trap us and all this other stuff. Nah, nah. It's not like that though. So, character, or oh, character. Now let's look at another word. Okay, um, and that's this one. Okay, substance. Behind that is hupa staseos. You understand? But um. What does this mean? Well, I took a picture of the of the 
of everything about it that this app has and it's uh, tagged by the number of 5287 right yeah 5287 and the definition is as follows it says over here and uh underlying uh, let me see a uh it says over here confidence a uh assurance uh be a uh, giving uh substance uh, or reality okay to or a um, a uh, guaranteeing I think it says here I'm using a matter of fine guys uh, gar- yeah, guaranteeing uh, C uh, substance you see all these you have to pick one and you can pick one maybe more than one sometimes and stuff like that okay they, they will fit the context though a substance um, a reality all right so that's just a deal. So, I mean, I just, uh, so, I mean, you know, I mean, of a substance, though. Now, what do I think this means? Because this is a hard one. Because Jehovah's Witnesses are never satisfied with the answer. Um, we can only give them, okay, what's in the Bible. Now, what does this really mean that he is the exact representation of his, of his, of his, of his, of his, of his being? Okay. All right, the radiance of his glory, uh, the exact representation of his being, I mean, uh, of his substance. I mean, what does that mean, though? Does that mean that he was merely a copy? Well, Hupadegmo is not here. Now, if he was just a copy, they would have been there, and it would have been the seventh time that was found in the Greek New Testament, but it's not. And I did not. You know what I'm saying? It's not, though. So you got to tell the witnesses that Hupadegmo, what does Hupadegmo mean? You know? And uh, Hupadegma in Mouse's Complete Expository Dictionary of Old and New Testament Words is headed up by the English word, okay, copy. I mean, if you want a pure word that means copy in the Bible, I mean, Hupadegma in the Greek New Testament, by the way, it's Hupadegma, found and recorded six times. And I already told you where those six times are located, uh, probably in Hebrews chapter 4, 8, and 9. And the other ones are found and recorded in John chapter 13 and uh, 2 Peter 2 and... In James chapter 5, but, but it's not used for Jesus, being a copy, okay, a pure copy of God, a copy of anything. So what does it mean? Well, I think this is the meaning of what uh, the Apostle Paul, if he, was, if he wrote uh, Hebrews, was trying to say, under, uh, or said, actually, under direct inspiration. You understand what I'm saying? Him being the secondary author of somebody else. Now, it says something like this, no one has seen or perceived, okay, God, at any time, okay, the only begotten God, the only begotten God who is in the bosom, okay, of the Father, okay, the Kolpan, of the Father, he has exegeted him, or he has explained him. The him is not there. Exegesata is there. So you have to put the him there because the him is not there, but you know that that's the deal. Echanos is there referring back to the to the to the son. Okay, or or you know, or or to uh who we now know as the son. It says over here, uh Theon Udes, okay, God, no article by the way, no Tan Theon, just Theon Udes, no one, okay, he oraken. That's in the perfect tense. You see the kappa and epsilon in the third person forming the perfect tense here. That's the tense formative, uh, kappa and epsilon there. If you just want kappa being the tense formative, go ahead. I don't care. And then um, I believe the reduplicating uh, reduplicating uh, vowel there, I believe that's there um, also as well, pointing out the, the, the perfect tense. Um, I believe that's there. I'll have to check that out a little bit more later. Now, it says over here, uh, uh, popate, okay, um, God, no one ha- has seen or perceived at any time, uh, popate, uh, uh, yeah, popate, um, managenes, okay, the only unique, okay, the only begotten, but the only unique as well, uh, theos, okay, haon, the one being, and then you have the participle again, being, in and that's ace the bosom and that's a ton kolpan bosom of the father to pat uh, to patras okay uh ekenas exegesata so ekenas doesn't refer to father 
okay, holding the rule of a Kainos, it refers back to uh, Theos found and recorded here, okay? Meaning, who we now know is Jesus. Okay, he exeged, or, or unless you will have, um, you know, the father, exe, you know, exegeting the father. You understand what I'm saying? The rule of Akanos is that it takes the, the remotest antecedent, but the rule of Hutas is that it takes the nearest antecedent. Thus, I believe 1 John chapter 5, verse 20 talks about Jesus being the true God. If the, the, the law of Hutos or Hutas is uh, there in the text. All right, so I think that this is the meaning of uh, this is the meaning that's found and recorded, okay? Or um, I think that this is the meaning of uh, Hebrews chapter one verse three, that um, someone came to represent the Father, but not only represent the Father, that He is the very same nature or essence of the Father, okay? He is the exact uh, representation. Okay, of his uh, substance, of his substance. You understand what I'm saying? So he's not only representing the Father, okay, but he is the same nature as the Father. And even though they were in Father and Son, I hate to say at that time of uh, John one one C, you see that uh, John one one C speaks about his his essence, meaning the, the essence of logos or lagos. You understand what I'm saying? That's why there's a predicate, and predicate nominatives, okay, can be definite without an article. You understand what I'm saying? Just like a prepositional phrases don't need an article in the middle of it, uh, you know, before the object of the preposition to be definite. Okay, it doesn't say en te arche yet, okay, yet the witnesses say in the beginning, okay, in their app. You understand what I'm saying? It is a need, uh, uh, um, uh, ha before Biblos, okay, in Greek, to make the book of the genealogy, you know, the book uh, definite, though the Jehovah's Witnesses, okay, have, okay, the word the in English, but there's no ha there. I'm not saying no manuscripts has the word ha there, or the, the weak demonstrative ha, you understand what I'm saying? But at least some manuscripts don't, uh, based on the most ancient authorities, but yet they, they use the there in their New World translation that actually comes from Johannes Greberg, uh, Johannes, Johannes Greberg's foundation. Um, you know the ordering of uh, five copies of that translation, and he was a spurt. You know he was a spiritist. I mean he was a witch, and yet they don't they don't celebrate Halloween. That's a, that's hypocritical if you ask me. You understand what I'm saying? All right, now um, let's get back to this. So I believe. Uh, let's get back to um, the NET, okay, over here, all right, all right, so the NET uh, says something like this again, the sun, okay, is the, okay, radiance of his glory, the radiance of his glory, and the representation, now it says the sun, though, it doesn't say logos is, there was no representation going on, there was nobody to represent, uh, the, the, the two, okay, though, you understand what I'm saying? There was no representation representation going on in John one one. You understand what I'm saying? Both of them are equal. There was no emptying going on, and there was no, you know he wasn't of you know he wasn't he didn't have a god meaning our logos didn't have a god or logos. I don't care how you pronounce it. You understand? Omicron nowadays called Omicron. Okay, this this is a set of the sun. And it says over here, it says the sun is the, the sun is the, not, not the logos was, no, it doesn't say that, you know, uh, logos ain't, it doesn't say that, okay, new movable and ain't over there, you understand what I'm saying, it doesn't say that, it says the sun is the, okay, radiance of his glory. He is the radiance of his glory. He's not a copy of it. But he, listen, it says the sun is the radiance of his glory. He is the radiance of his glory. And the representation, okay, representation of his essence. Now, representation has to do that he was sent, okay, 
the express image of his person. Now let's get into that this, en- this engraving that went on in ancient times. You understand what I'm saying? A signet ring or whatever the case may be. Okay, but you know, if you will follow suit, then then it says over here that actually that the son is the engraver. Okay, you understand? He's the tool itself that was used to engrave. Took hold of the seed of Abraham. Does it mean that? I mean, if you want to press me, and no, no, no pun intended. You understand what I'm saying? But Jesus is the tool, okay, that he used to express himself. You understand what I'm saying? I'm just saying, if you're saying, if you follow suit, if you follow everything, okay, like the Jehovah's Witnesses want, well, I mean, Jesus is the tool. I'm just saying. I mean, copy. He's the tool. He's the he's the he's the one who did it. You know, took hold of the seed of Abraham, a spermatos of of of, of David, or uh, I think of of uh, David, I should say. You understand what I'm saying? Him being the the offspring, Genas, and uh, and uh, the Chriza, Chriza of David, the root of David in Greek. You understand what I'm saying? Verse 16, chapter 22 of Revelation. But he took hold of the seed, <laughs> so he's he's the tool. So you act, wax eloquent about the tool, the engraving tool, the the wax. And all this stuff and all that. But, you know, when you come down to it, Jesus is, you know, to follow suit. He's the tool himself. He's the actual tool. I'm just saying, he's the tool. Well, that's no deal. But you forget to say this in your, you know, debates and campaigns. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, Jesus is a copy. Where, where's Hoopa Degma at? Uh, come on, man. It's just like Joe Biden all over again. You know what I'm saying? Come on, man. Where is it? I don't see no Hoopa Degma over here. I'm just saying, is it, is it original? I gave you the, the English, I gave you the Greek, okay, ancient authority based text. I'm giving you, you know, Byzantine text form just in case you're a King Chains only knucklehead. You understand what I'm saying? I'm just saying. Where, where is it? I mean, Jesus is a tool. Forget about him being a copy. He's actually the tool, <laughs> tool himself. At your title of test of you, you understand what I'm saying? All right, so, so the sun, the sun is not Logos, the sun is the radiance, okay, of his glory. By the way, you know when Jesus prayed for the glory in uh, John chapter chapter seventeen verse five, do you know that Jesus commanded the Father to give him the glory? Now he didn't use a you know a bad attitude about it all. You know, you know there are imperatives. You know we call them um, the imperative of entreaties. Okay, all across the board in the Lord's prayer. I mean, Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done. Those are imperatives. Those are commands to the Father by His children. Now my son could command me. He can't come with a bad attitude about it. But he could command me, well, you know, you promised to give me a drink of water or whatever, juice or whatever. He's a baby. I mean, so I mean, milk, whatever it is, you know, Sean Donnelly, you understand what I'm saying? Okay, well, he can't say it now because he can't speak now. But uh, g- give me, um, you know, g- give me the drink. All right, give it to me. Because I know, oh, yeah, yeah, no, I did promise. Okay, here you go. Oh, I mean, this is not a bad attitude that he's using, you know. And when we, when we, um, you know, pray to the Father, it's not a bad attitude. So Jesus wasn't, you know, when he was commanding the Father, because that's what it is. I mean, we water it down in Greek, but that's an imperative over there. Let's check that out. As a matter of fact, I hope this thing is still recording, though. It would be absolute shame if it's not. But let's get there, okay. Um, let's get there. Okay, John. I wish it was still in John, but it's not. It's in, I think it's in Hebrew style. Let's go. Let's hasten. And then, and, and then let's finish up because it might go all the way to the end of the memory. And then I'm going to be I'm gonna be stuck with, with something worthless, something annihilated. You know what I'm saying? Not to, not to use lingo of the tower. <laughs> okay. I never was in the tower. And thank God I never will be. Now, but let's, um, let's go there. Okay. This... Um, and uh, chapter 17 is right here recorded. So let's see. And verse 5 is here. Okay. I, I really don't like this app when it comes to the numbers. It's very, very small. It says over here, and now, it says over here, Kai, noon, noon is now. Glorify. Okay. Glorify me. And this man accuses the case. So let's check this out. Look at this. Glorify me. This is not just any old, any, it says, uh, Daksa, Daksasan. Daksasan. Okay, Daksasan, you understand what I'm saying? But let's check it out. What, what is it? 
Ah, this is the horse of a different color. This is an aorist imperative active. Do you know that the Jehovah's Witnesses don't, uh, don't even know and understand that Jesus commanded the Father right over here? He commanded the Father to give him... Nah, he, didn't, he didn't have that sassy attitude. I'm not talking about that. But I'm talking about since Jesus had glory before the emptying, and it was his glory, he, he asked for the glory back. But he didn't beg for his glory back. He asked uh, for it back with confidence and boldness in prayer. He did the kenosis. He did the emptying. You understand what I'm saying? He emptied himself of glory. He got the glory back because he prayed for it. And he commanded the Father. This was the, Listen, the imperative in Greek is the mood of command. Don't forget that. That there's a verse in the Bible, and there's probably others, that Jesus commanded the Father. Now, that's not to belittle the Father. Never. That's to magnify the Son and his approach to his Father God. You know what I'm saying? He commanded the Father. Let's not, let's, let's not get it twisted. You understand what I'm saying? That's just it. He, he said that he will not give his glory to another. Another, another being, including men, including deities in the, in, the, in, in the small sense of the word. You understand what I'm saying? But it's not another. It's another person, but it's not another being. That he's giving the glory back. That's just a deal. He's giving the glory back because it belonged to Jesus. That's just a deal. It belonged to him, so he 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 wants it back. Now he doesn't want it back. Like, listen, I gave it. To, you know, I, I emptied it, so I want it back. I mean, come on, you promised me. I mean, give it give it to me back. It's not like that, though, man. It's 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 listen. It's prayer. It's the high priestly prayer. This is the true true <laughs> with the Greek or oh, 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 You understand what I'm saying? The true <laughs> Lord's prayer. And he's commanding the Father. That's what it is. This idea that they're not equals is, is, is not hitting in this text. I'll tell you that right now. Give me the glory back. Okay. I says, and now glorify. Glorify me. Me. You. It says, Sue. Okay. From the Sue, Sue, Soy, said paradigm. Who makes who moan who mean who must? You understand what I'm saying? A second person, person, a pronoun for a singular part of a paradigm, father. With, and that's uh, para uh, with yourself. Okay, say auto, and that's an adjective case actually. Say auto with yourself, with the, and that's they, that's a feminine uh, dative article from the tote to sign of the paradigm, with the glory, doxe, and that's an adjective case. Okay, that, and that's a relative pronoun. Okay, as a relative pronoun, you understand what I'm saying? Hey, and that's a whole, from the whole hey ho, that's a dative uh, uh, relative pronoun also. Ho hey ho, that's out of the paradigm. I had, okay, echan. I had it. Not that you gave it to me. Not that someone else gave it to me. Not that I was made and I was, you know, I, I emerged with it or something like that before. It says, bra. Uh, um, the the world um, and it's going to be Cosmon over here no doubt uh, Tan Cosmon okay existed okay uh, and it says over here and I existed you understand what I'm saying yeah, I think there's an infinitive over there is that an infinitive it says over there I think that's in the what in the present tense uh, the, the magnifying class is getting foggy and that's an infinitive. The end points out on active. The ni there, the new alpha iota is telling me this is an infinitive. Okay? It's in the present. It's in the present tense. Okay? Existed. Okay? A ni. That's an infinitive, a verbal noun. You understand what I'm saying? With, okay, para. With uh, uh, you. Okay? Uh, soy, actually. Soy. And that's from the su su soy say. Uh, side of the paradigm, okay. That's a dative, uh, singular, um, uh, second person personal pronoun. Okay, he's commanding the follow. Don't forget it. Let's look at it again. So this idea, he's just a cappy. Ah, uh, please give me a break, man. I mean, you witnesses, man. You got everything wrong. Say nobody was gonna go to the moon. About twenty-four people did, including including Captain Kirk. 
I mean, he wasn't really like the captain when he came down. I'll tell you, he was hoping that the parachutes, okay, would open. And then he gave a big hug to, uh, you know, uh, what's his name from Amazon, Basis or whatever. I don't know. I forgot his name. But he said to William Shatner, give me a hug. And he, and he, and he, and William Shatner goes, ooh. <laughs> he was in the captain's back, kick. Hoping that the parachutes would come, you know, you know, come out. No, no, that wasn't the captain. To the chagrin of Sulu, by the way, you understand what I'm saying? That never had a never had a girl in Star Trek in his life. That's why he's like, you know, witching whining and complaining about Kirk. What did he go up to uh, to outer space? You know, so I mean, he just went to the tippy edge of it, but still, it counts. It's in the books. Well, let's get back to this. Aris imperative active man. This is an Aris imperative active. You have to understand that. This is an this is a mood of command. I mean, listen, Jesus commanded the Father to do something. Don't forget it. That's the that's this part of the Bible. Oh, but we call it an imperative and entreaty. Yeah, that's watering it down. I mean, it's just, it's just, it's just oh, we can't call it a command. We have to call it an entreaty. This is like we're playing cowboys and Indians or something like that. You understand what I'm saying? Call it what it is, an imperative command. That's what it is. Command. Because this is the mood of command. This is an imperative. This is an imperative mood. All right. That's just it. All right. So that's just the deal. All right. Now, um, so let's just get back to this because I want to really uh, close. Okay. And uh, in uh, my next study, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, um, tell you why. I know that the King James uh, Version made a mistake over here, and they said person in the translation. That's a mistake. We learned, okay, we learned that Jesus is not a copy. Not that we learned it, we believers. I mean, we knew it all along. Jesus is not a copy of God. He is God. Now, um, if you go to... Um, the Greek, okay, I want to go to the Greek again of uh, John 1, 18, you understand? You're going to see the Greek word exegesata, and that's why I think that um, the meaning, okay, of uh, Hebrews 1, 3 is, cr is quite crystal clear, because you have to get a match somewhere else to elucidate 1, 3, if it's not elucidated already to you, you know, somewhere. you have to get a teaching verse to actually bring it alongside, you know, para, <laughs> pun intended, you know what I'm saying? So we can have a match, you understand? So let me get those are videos over there, though. So I don't want a video. I want a picture of these things here, found and recorded, you understand? It says over here again in verse 18 of chapter 1 of the Gospel, Kata Ioannin, no one, Udes, no one has seen, Horao, okay, God at any time. Okay, the only begotten, okay, the only begotten, or oh God the one, God the one and only, says the NIV, one of the NIVs anyway, okay, only begotten God, okay, who is in the bosom, was in the chest or the bosom of, of the Father, okay, he has, okay, explained him. And I think that's what it means to be a representation. You're not only just there to showcase what you what you are he did that jesus did that by commandment by the way so the shoe is on the other foot now you know what i'm saying not only did did, did 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 jesus command the father but you know before that the father commanded him what to what to say and what to do you know so they both commanded each other you understand what i'm saying but he explained the father. He was here for two reasons. To showcase who his father was, giving glory to the father, but also to point out, okay, the true essence of, of himself, Jesus. So he's killing two birds with one stone. He came here to do two things, okay, to showcase his father and to showcase himself. And I think that's the true meaning, you understand, of Hebrews 1.8. Let's read it again. Okay. Now, uh, let's get the Greek, though, before we do that again, you understand? The Greek of, uh, of uh, verse 18 there. Theon udes heoraken, ke heoraken, heoraken popate, heoraken popate, managenes theas, aon, eis tan kolpan, 
o kalpan uh, tu patras, okay, tu patras, so that's an adjective, ekenas, okay, exe gesata. Now, ese gesata means to declare, to make known, to reveal. That's what he was doing. But he was the ex he was the ex express image of his nature, or the exact representation of his being doing it. He was okay, the essence of God, okay, showcasing the essence of the Father. That's the I mean, you know. That's just the deal. You know, is that what I'm saying? And this this verse is telling you that. This verse is telling you why he came. And it says that he exegeted the Father. Exegesis comes from that. From this uh, Greek word, I should say, rather. You understand know what I'm saying? He exegeted the Father. He explained the Father. He revealed his character, his essence, his everything. You understand know what I'm saying? Before he went back to glory. This is Angelo Quinones given glory. To God the Father through the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you understand what I'm saying? God is not the God of the dead. Of the moot in Hebrew. But of the living. And that means that Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Were very much alive at the time that Jesus said those words. Please subscribe to my channel. Please give me a thumbs up. And please leave a comment on the screen. Thank you.